I needed to cut down the legs of a bar stool um, that are made out of steel. And the problem with that is that I couldn't get a hacksaw to go through it. And even if I did, I had 24 of these things to cut down. It would have taken me ages. So I had to come up with a different way to hold these things down and to be consistent from leg to leg. Obviously, even an eighth of an inch difference is going to make the thing wobble when it's on, say, like a hardwood floor. So I thought maybe one solution might be this little kind of mini chop saw that I have uh, with a brace of discs. And the problem with this thing is, even though it's about the right size, and it would definitely handle the depth of this tube, check this out. When it's sitting there like this, that is the kind of wobbliness that it has in it. And obviously, you know, if I pull it this way one time, it's going to, you know, with such a variance there, I'd never get good, clean, consistent cuts. So I can't, what I came up with instead was to look at putting blades in my miter saw and trying to cut metal on it, even though it's meant for wood. I read a whole bunch of stuff on this. People said it could be done. Others said it couldn't. This was one suggestion, was an abrasive disc put in my miter saw. Now, the problem that I've heard with a lot of these things is because the abrasive um, is meant to disintegrate as it's cutting, it creates a hell of a lot of black dust all over the place. It's got a pretty thick cur kerf, even though this is a sixteenth of an inch, it says. I don't think that's even close to accurate. This is gonna at least take an eighth of an inch off. Um, again, this would probably work, but I'd end up cutting the whole, you know, it'd make a hell of a mess. And on top of it, these plastic guards on the miter saws are not meant for uh, sparks. And so the problem with this is that as if this was coming down the way that it normally would over wood, it would melt this. I've read several people that said that that's the big issue with cutting metal is that you melt your saw. Clearly that's not going to work. So what I did was I just took the 10 inch blade off of here and I put a seven inch blade I got at Home Depot. It's a metal cutting blade. It's like 280 teeth. And it is for ferrous metals. So you got to make sure that that's the kind that you get. Um, and I put it in my saw. I know it's going to, because it's only 7 inches instead of 10, the actual surface of the blade is going to spin slower, which already eliminates one issue of it maybe cutting too fast. Now, this blade is meant for a circular saw. And circular saw is running about... I don't know, 4,500, I mean, 4,000 or 5,000 RPM. This saw is probably going to turn a little less than that. So this shouldn't be a problem in here. And then on top of it, because it is a smaller blade, the actual RPM will be slower with a small blade versus a large blade. And so I put it in here. First, I had to remove this portion. This goes over the, um, you know, this is the automatic guard that comes down and it pivots as, you know, when you're normally cutting wood, which is a great thing. Keeps a lot of mess, keeps stuff off of you. Problem is, again, I didn't want any sparks melting, melting this. So I took this off. Well, I didn't take it off all the way. I just undid it. You just take it off and push it to the back. It's out of the way. You don't need to remove it all the way. So um, that is the setup. This orange thing is a laser guide. Probably unnecessary, but it's kind of helpful. So I had an aftermarket laser guide on here because this saw didn't come with one to begin with. I decided not to use this. This may actually work, but I wanted something faster and something that's going to throw a hell of a lot less sparks and make much less of a mess. So then I decided, okay, well, 
if I'm trying to hold this on the saw just by hand and it catches, it's going to rip it out of my hands and well, all kinds of bad things can happen. This thing could, you know, get snagged. It could rip it out of my hands. Um, could injure me, could definitely screw these up. And I've only got the legs it came with. So if I screw them up you can see there's a curve to them, it's not like I can just replace them. A curve and it's also got this uh, indent here where it slides into the stool. I wouldn't be able to use these if I messed one up. So it's pretty important that I could um, not only hold it down really well, which these saws are not necessarily set up to do. You know, this one didn't come with any clamps for the surface. You just kind of butt the wood up to the fence and use it that way. Not acceptable. And like I said, I had 24 of these to cut. So I had to come up with some repeatable way where it's going to be within, you know, 16th, 32nd of an inch every single time. So I came up with this fence and you can see here. Okay, here you can see a pretty good view of the fence. So I've got a, what is this, a one by two attached to the fence itself. Screwed in one screw here, one screw here. I've got a one by two on the base of it to lift the whole piece up so that the blade will go all the way through it when it's down like that. And then I just screwed in a block here and a block here after having carefully measured exactly how much of this I need to cut off in order to get the proper length. Okay, curved side, you can see how it curves here. Want this flat side um, like this. So flat side toward this side of the fence. And again, just kind of rotate it. And you see here, it moves up and down. It kind of quits moving right about here. And I can verify by looking down there at the bottom and I can see if there's a gap. If there's a gap, it needs to be closed up. So when this is perfectly even, you can clamp it on. Okay, so that's nice and clamped on this side. Now I need to hold it here. I use my quick grip and Get this as close as I can to the blade. Clamp that. And I've got little, my little handy dandy spacer that I put in there. It's nice and solid. This is, was a sacrificial fence. I um, didn't cut it and measure precisely. I just put the fence up and then let this blade cut through it as I cut the first couple legs. It made this groove for me. It's the simplest way to do it. So I'm going to make the cut. So here goes. Careful, these can be really hot. It's not this time, but it can be. Undo it. You can see there's quite a bit of uh, leftover material on there that's going to need to be uh, filed down. So I take that, I take my little file here, and I just clean up that inside edge. Pretty good. There's a little bit on this side. Okay, the inside of that is nice and smooth. And be careful when you're doing this because this is really sharp. It can go right through your finger. Now we'll take it over to the grinder. Let's start with the flat edge first. Kind of clean that up a little bit. And then 
I'll start on the edge at a more oblique angle. Kind of a 45 degree angle. And I'm not pressing hard, I'm just letting the grinding wheel do the work. You don't have to be super precise with this because that rubber cap is going to hide most issues. So it's looking pretty good, but you can see there's still some on the edge. That's where I take it, and I go almost parallel. Kind of round it off nicely. There you go. It's pretty clean to the point where I can touch it and it doesn't snag my fingers or anything like that. When it's nice and smooth to my finger, then I know it's not going to cut through the cap. You can put the cap back on, press it down, and this leg is ready to go on the chair. And here they are with their caps all back on, ready to go on the stools.